Venezuelan President Nicolás Maduro Moros informed about the COVID-19 balance in the country while expressing his intention to acquire the vaccines against COVID-19 developed in Cuba. Temper checks and mandatory masks are on the agenda as Libyans vote in municipal council elections in the west of the country. Preliminary results in Kyrgyzstan's presidential election has seen Sadir Saparov win in a landslide. Hello. From the headquarters of Telesuri English in Havana, Cuba, this is From the South. I'm Gladys Quesada. And we begin with the news. Stay with us. And the Venezuelan president, Nicolás Maduro Moros, informed about the COVID-19 balance in the country while expressing his intention to acquire the vaccines against COVID-19 developed in Cuba. I want to sign an agreement with Cuba for sovereign vaccine number two to reach Venezuela. We reached an Alba TCP consensus agreement that Alba TCP would have its vaccine guaranteed and I told Chancellor Arreaza that we must fulfill it. 10 million vaccines are coming for now, then 20, 30, 40 million. A major claim must be to meet the needs of the Alba TCP. It can be that everyone is on their own. That can be everyone on their own. I buy my vaccines, I buy others' vaccines, and everyone is on their own. No, the Alba TCP is the union, and if anything, we must react, and it's now why I'm glad. I congratulate myself that we had at Alba TCP and in Latin America with Cuba, the scientific vanguard. President Maduro also discussed the installation of a dialogue commission by the new National Assembly in order to promote understanding among the political factors in the country. Well, I'm ready to go when I'm summoned to the National Assembly for dialogue. As one more person, I'm going to go and so I want to be treated as a citizen. I am president, but more as a citizen than a president to hear, to seek a plan. The recovery of the country through the dialogue is understanding and reconciliation. The president also referred to the violent protests that assaulted the Congress of the United States while he criticized the permanent elimination of Donald Trump's Twitter account. I wonder how in American this is sedition, insurrection, hatred and violence. And they have been arresting over a hundred of these people and they are saying they are going to give them up to life in prison. But in Venezuela, there are civil society protests, civil society heroes. Trump's Twitter account is suspended, but when in Venezuela there have been guarimbas and attempted coup d'etat, like on April 30th, they don't suspend the account of Guaido of Leopoldo López, in the accounts of the double moral and double standards. And the candidates in Ecuador's presidential election, set for February the 7th, held their tired first debate on Saturday, organized by private media. The debate came amidst a dispute over the possible removal of four councillors from the board of the National Electoral Council. Candidates discussed the economy, employment, public health and public safety. Each person had one minute and 30 seconds to present their proposals and an extra minute for rebuttals. Union for the Esperanza, UNAS candidate Andres Arauz, who is currently leader of voter intention surveys, did not participate. And also Trinidad and Tobago's Prime Minister and CARICOM Chair Dr. Keith Rowley has been discharged from the hospital after undergoing an angioplasty. According to a statement released by the Office of the Prime Minister, Dr. Rowley was examined by his doctors and declared fit to be discharged. The recently appointed Chair of the Caribbean Community felt discomfort and was rushed to a private medical facility on Friday. In the United States, Democratic congressmen advance in their goal of applying impeachment to outgoing President Donald Trump before the end of his term. Congress members have announced that his Monday 
they will issue a formal request for the impeachment, also against Trump. The request is backed by at least 180 opposition lawmakers who hold him responsible for the five casualties recorded after the violent assault on Congress. This measure seeks to apply the 25th Amendment of the Constitution, in which the vice president and the cabinet majority declared the president unfit to continue in office, requesting his immediate dismissal. And a man killed three people and wounded four others in a series of shootings which took place over roughly four hours, starting on Chicago's south side and ended with the shooter's death. Investigators are trying to determine a motive for the attacks, which began Saturday afternoon with the killing of a 30-year-old University of Chicago student who was shot in the head while sitting in his car in a parking garage. The shooter, 32-year-old Jason Nightingale, then walked into the apartment building a block away, where he shot a 46-year-old security guard who was sitting at the desk and a 77-year-old woman who was getting her mail. On January the 1st, inhabitants at the town of Hidalgo Amajac in the state of Veracruz in Mexico discovered a sculpture when working at a critic field. The statue is almost two meter high limestone sculpture, 500 to 600 years old, and allegedly portraying a high class woman, according to archaeologists. The two meter long monolith depicts a woman that could belong to the Huasteca culture dating 1450 to 1521 after Christ. Archaeologists believe that the piece represents a woman that belonged to the elite, might be a governor due to her posture and wardrobe. And we'll go now to a short break, but follow us in Twitter at Telesur English and Gladys Telesur. Welcome back to From the South. Temperature checks and mandatory masks are on the agenda as Libyans vote in municipal council elections in the west of the country, in what is being seen as a test ahead of December's general election. We are following strict protocols for the municipal council elections. According to the World Health Organization's requirements, we have contacted international institutions, including the French Embassy, which provided us with the right equipment to help combat coronavirus. Ethiopian refugees who fled conflict in the Degray region have finally settled a new camp in Sudan. The settlement was established by the United Nations High Commission for Refugees at the Tendenba camp in Mufasa, located in the east of the country. The UN Refugee Agency said it is still receiving new migrants as the Sudanese government has kept its borders open to allow free movement for asylum keepers. We are right here yesterday, after two months of displacement. We found the situation better here. Since we arrived, we found a cooked food and we ate. We stood in line for a quarter of an hour only, and we received our tent and settled in. The people who arrived before us have received everything, lights, solar panels, and donations. Mosques and schools in the Gaza Strip have reopened following sanitary measures. Palestinian youth have returned to school while Muslim worshippers pray at the mosque in Gaza City after a decision by the Strip's Hamas Islamist rulers to allow prayer in mosques from Sunday to Thursday. Precautionary measures were put in place, with worshippers having to wear face masks, bringing their own prayer math and maintaining social distancing. However, Hamas interior minister has said that mosques will remain closed on Fridays and Saturdays when a full lockdown across the Palestinian enclave will remain in place. After more than a month of closing the mosques due to the coronavirus pandemic, it was decided today to reopen them. We also took some sanitary measures, including wearing the protective mask, not shaking hands, and keeping a social distance of not less than two meters between each worshippers. And Bahrain will open its airspace to Squatara as of January 11th, the Civil Aviation Affairs Authority said on Sunday. The move comes after Rijas announced a breakthrough at the summit on Tuesday to end the bitter political row in which Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates,
States, Bahrain and Egypt imposed a diplomatic trade and travel boycott on Qatar in mid-2017. Saudi Arabia and the UAE have already announced reopening air, land and sea entry points to Qatar. Saudi Arabia's foreign minister had said that the summit for the four states agreed to restore all ties with Qatar, which were severe over accusations that Doha supports terrorism. Qatar denies this and says the embargo aimed to curb its sovereignty. Meanwhile, the United Arab Emirates could resume travel and trade links with Qatar within a week, but there are still many issues to rebuild trust, said a senior official from the UAE on Thursday. False diplomatic relations are expected to be restored between Qatar and Saudi Arabia, the UAE, Bahrain and Egypt, as representatives sign an historical agreement that the Gulf Cooperation Council summit in the Saudi city of Alula. Hospitals' numbers are continuing to rise nationwide, with the head of the HSE urging people to follow restrictions to stop the surge. The news comes as case soared again, with 6,888 being recorded on Sunday. The British-run region has struggled with persistently high coronavirus infection rates, despite being an out of some form of lockdown since October. Cases soared to by far their highest level since the pandemic began after the Christmas holidays. we are introducing today is designed to reflect that stark and simple reality. Unless you are involved in absolutely essential work, you have no reason to be away from your home and you simply must stay at home. So from today until at least the end of January, the following additional restrictions will apply in addition to the full level five protocol. All schools must remain closed with teaching to move online. There will be two exemptions to this. Special education should remain open with protections in place. And Leaving Cert students should continue to attend, to attend school for three days a week from January the 11th. Also, thousands of people in England, age 80 and older, have received invitations to get their coronavirus vaccine, officials said on Sunday as Britain ramps up its national vaccination program. More than 600,000 invitations are due to arrive at doorsteps across England this week, asking people to sign up for jobs at new mass vaccination centres, which have been set up across the country. The seven new large-scale immunisation centres join around 1,000 other sites at hospitals, general practitioners, clinics and some pharmacies. The government says so far more than 1.2 million people have been given the first dose of the vaccine and officials plan to vaccinate around 50 million people by the middle of February. You know, vitally important. It's the way that we're hopefully be able to get through the different numbers. So, as I've already said, the GP surgeries and the acute hubs have already started this fantastic work. But really, to be able to get through the numbers and really start going through those different cohorts and getting as many people as vaccinated as possible, we need more and more sites and really be able to get that throughput. Snowstorms across much of Spain have left four people dead and caused chaos in the country. On Friday, Madrid experienced its heaviest snowfalls since 1971, after what the weather agency described as exceptional and most likely historic conditions caused by storm Filomena. Madrid Barajas Airport was shut down with traffic disruptor on nearly 400 roads. The Renfe Rail Network said all trains to and from Madrid have also been cancelled. The Spanish government has announced that more than 700 major routes are still impassable across the country after Saturday's snowstorm, the worst of the country has seen in decades. At present, 702 roads are still affected by the heavy snowfalls of the last few hours. 171 are cut off from traffic, two of them belonging to the main road network of Girona and Toledo. As regards the state of the network and rail services, as you know, yesterday afternoon, the rail network extended the suspension of the services to and from Madrid for both high-speed and long and medium-distance trains. 
18 people have been arrested in Denmark after demonstrations against the country's coronavirus restrictions turned violent. Several hundred people assembled for a legally registered protest in the town hall square in central Copenhagen. The protest had been legally registered without the Danish authorities in advance, and it was therefore not subject to the restrictions on gatherings currently in place. However, police in riot gear were captured in videos posted online in via television broadcasts, clashing with demonstrators who lit fireworks and threw bottles. The country has been a partial lockdown since mid-December, with a tightening of measures announced on Tuesday to stop a surge of the recently discovered COVID-19 variant believed to spread faster. And we have more news coming up after a final short break, so stay with us. Welcome back to From the South. Preliminary results in Kyrgyzstan presidential election has seen Sadir Saparov win in a landslide. Kyrgyzstan's Central Election Commission said Saparov has won 79% of votes according to preliminary results. Voters also approve a constitutional change to give the presidency more power. The election followed the outsting of previous president Surumbai Javankov in October, whose government was accused of rigging parliamentary elections. Saparov, who has imprisoned in 2017 on conviction of involvement in the kidnapping of a regional governor, spearheaded Javankov's removal from office. And also parliamentary elections have kicked off in Kazakhstan. The ruling party is expected to score a big win with no major opposition groups running in the vote. The nationwide Social Democratic Party, the main opposition party in the country, is boycotting the vote. Another opposition movement, the Democratic Party, failed to secure official registration ahead of the vote. The elections will decide 98 of 107 seats in the lower house. Nine other seats will be separately elected by the Assembly of People of Kazakhstan, a political body designed to represent ethnic minorities in the country. In an attempt to modernize the system, President Kasim Jomara Toaryev has overseen the introduction of quotas for women and under 29s in political parties' candidates' list. I think this election must become a step forward in the development of our democracy. Every election is a serious test of our civic maturity. I sincerely hope that there will be various parties in our parliament. The authorities have done everything necessary to hold a fair election. All candidates have been provided with equal opportunities. An Indonesian rescue team has recovered what it is thought to be part of engine of a Sri Lanka airplane, which came down Saturday shortly after takeoff from Jakarta. Parts of the wreckage of the Boeing 737-500 were found at the depth of 23 meters in the Java Sea. It's still unclear what broke down the flight, which had 62 people on board, including seven children and three babies. There was no sign of survivors. Fishermen in the area reported hearing an explosion around 2.30 p.m. Saturday. This is the second fatal plane crash to occur in the country's airspace in two years. In October 2018, 189 people were killed where a Lion Air Boeing 737 MAX jet crashed near the capital, Jakarta. Still in Indonesia, at least 11 people have been killed, including a six-year-old boy, and thousands more remain missing after deadly landslides hit the country's west Java province. Torrential rains triggered the disaster on Saturday evening in the town of Sumedang, where a second landslide buried residents and a rescue team that had been searching for the initial victims. Authorities continue to look for survivors. And Seychelles has started the COVID-19 vaccination program after receiving 50,000 doses of a Chinese vaccine. 
The archipelago nation has become one of the first African countries to begin vaccinating its population against the coronavirus. Seychelles received a donation of 50,000 doses of a vaccine made by Chinese pharma giant Sinopharm. The campaign will start with the country's leaders and health workers will start getting their doses on Monday. And receiving the vaccine. And I want this to be an example for all Seychelles Wa to show that the vaccine is safe and that it will give us another tool in our arsenal for victory. And we have come to the end of this news brief. But remember, you can find this and many other stories on our website at telesurienglish.net. And also, if you feel so inclined, please join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and Telegram. For Telesur English, I'm Gladys Quesada. Thank you for watching.